morning, everyone, and welcome to our weekly online service. Uh, if it's your first time with us, a special welcome to you. I'm Graham, and this is my wife, Irene. Um, we hope you're all coping with the restrictions that have been placed upon us. Um, it's funny, just before the lockdown, I was reading the Old Testament, or the be beginning of the lockdown, um, and my mind was brought to, to Noah. Uh, he spent 150 days in lockdown. That's five months. But at least he had his family with him. But goodness gracious, I hope we don't have to do that. Today, as we come to worship and share together, we're going to thank God. We're going to thank him for something that's helped us during these difficult days. As we miss our freedom, as we miss our family and our friends, our church family. Um, I want to start by thanking God for our garden here, which although it's been hard work at times, it brings a peace and a joy to my mind and soul as I work with God's wonderful creation. Thank you, Lord. Irene, you've got something to thank God for? Well, before I knew what Graham was thanking God for, my, the, thought, my, the thought that came to me was our garden as well. Um, I just wanted to thank him. When you see all the plants growing, and the beauty of it all. It just reminds us how great our God is. But also to thank Graham for Graham because he's worked so hard in the garden because I don't do anything in there. So that's what we want to say thank that's what I want to say thank you for. Yeah. So we welcome you everyone and God bless God bless you all. Okay. Yeah. Hi all. Hope you're all keeping well. Just like to say to the Lord uh, thank you for looking after my uh, family and friends this time. And um, for myself, I'm having a wage coming in this month. So God bless. Thank you, Lord, for the sound of the water trickling down the waterfall into our pond. Hello, church. I want to say thank you for family. I'm missing some of mine and spending a lot of time with others. Thank you for these lovely people. Thank you. Thank you for all the trucks in the town. Yeah, and thank you for our families. Thank you for each other and thank you for everything. We are thankful for. Thank God for the beautiful sunshine and these flowers. Thank you, God, for the flowers and the birds. I really thank the Lord for giving me the gift of music, especially the gift of organ playing, which is so special to me. And my prayer is that I will use the music to bring glory to his name. Here we go. Thank you, Father, for small things like hats, the weather, and um, for things like newspapers. <laughs> Thank you for having a nice garden that we can set out. Thank you, Lord, for friends, family, church. I just want to say thank you, Father, for enabling me to finish my cancer treatment safely and for restoring me to health and strength and joy in you. Just thank you day by day for your goodness to us. And this is, a t this is always Thanksgiving in our lives. And you said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, that in everything we should give thanks. And Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. I personally just thank you for everything and everyone. Thank you for my children, grandchildren, and loved ones. Thank you for all my friends at church, family, far and near church family, for the goodness and your love and your care. Father, we just continue to give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. Keep thanking you. And Let's continue to give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we uh, come before you this morning to declare that you are Lord. In this place, in all the places we currently are, we stand together, we sit together, whatever we're doing, wherever we are, we just want to say that you are Lord, that you are mighty, that you are stronger than anything that is before us, anything that has been behind us. And we just want to come together now and praise your name. So we just pray that you would be with us you will bless us that you'd fill us with your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Oh, 
shall come to pass in the last days, says God. I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servant and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs, signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Therefore, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which, we, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified, have put to death, whom God raised up, having lost the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart rejoiced, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope, and for you will not leave my soul in head, nor will you allow your only one to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Men and brethren, <coughs> let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he will rise, he will rise up the Christ to sit upon his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoken concerning the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hate nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witness. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into heavens, but he says, himself. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all 
the house of Israel, know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to hear, they were cut to heart, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, and men, men and and men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is to you and to your children, and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord has called. Amen. The disciples are together. Huddled together, they are they in the upper room? We don't know. But here they are together when suddenly wings and tongues of fire uh, come upon the place where they are. And it forces them out. It forces them out of their situation, out of their room, uh, to the point where they go outside, if you like. They've been on lockdown. And now, finally, they get to go outside. I'm the Reverend Richard Marzetti. And uh, I'm the minister here at Chatsworth Baptist Church in West Nord. And I've been invited to share uh, God's word with you this morning. Uh, no more running around. Uh, I just wanted to do that a little bit. I, I felt it was just this great episode, isn't there? In, in the book of Acts and this, uh, the manner of pa- Pentecost where the disciples are filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and it, it, it just sends them out, sends them out from their room out into the open they speak in different languages and something compels them to go out and share the good news about Jesus Christ so I wanted to physically if you like enact that to begin with so but thank you thank you for uh, allowing me to share uh, God's word with you this morning three things I want to share uh, really this morning first in the passage I have from Acts 2 uh, 14 to 38 Uh, where Peter gets up and he speaks before the people of the time to say, look, he reveals some scripture. So he quotes from what we understand now as the Old Testament. And he he quotes from uh, the book of Joel, one of the Old Testament prophets. He reveals people's need as he speaks. And ultimately, he reveals Jesus. So first of all, uh, Peter speaks and he reveals scripture. He reveals the meaning of scripture. And he picks up an Old Testament prophecy from the prophet Job, where he says, uh, as it says here, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. So Peter reveals God's word. And I think there's something about the proclamation in in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're we're revealing God's word. We're revealing uh, what God's word means to us today. Now, uh, Joel's word would have had a meaning back at the time or in the days of Joel. um, But Peter is able to see beyond that, that in the power of the Spirit, he's able to reveal God's word further, that actually God has a meaning now today in that that place and that presence in Jerusalem to say, and this is now what it means again. It meant something then and it means something again today. Uh, We often think about context. What's the context of the word back then? But what does it speak to us about today? And that's what Peter is doing. He's using God's word and the power of the spirit to say, and now it means this. Let me reveal what it means. Let me reveal God's word to you. And I think when we think about uh, speaking in the proclamation of the spirit, it is about revealing God's word through the spirit to say, this is what God's word means to us today in this situation. And it's a powerful word. Uh, You know, it's not about age anymore. It's not about young and old. It's not about gender anymore. It's not about men or women. 
It's not about uh, whether you're slave or free. The Holy Spirit is available to all. And so Peter reveals this to the people of the day to say, look, you know, uh, God's very presence is available to everyone. It's not just, you know, guys with long beards uh, sitting in temples. It's now available to men and women. It's now available to old and young. It's now available to, to slave and free. And all of those people are able to proclaim in the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter's saying it's open. God's presence will now rest on all of those people and all will be able to proclaim uh, God's spirit and God's word. As Peter preaches, of course, and he speaks to the people of the time to say, Yo, didn't you know? Didn't you know who, who we were following? Didn't you know who, who gave his life for your sake? And it says later that it says that the people are cut to the heart that as uh, Peter says this, uh, verse 37, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And I think that proclamation in the power of the Spirit reveals people's need for Jesus. It reveals our need and our longing to know Jesus Christ in our life. And that's what I think proclamation in the power of the Spirit does. It reveals God's word and what it means, but it reveals our need our need for God, our need to have that God-shaped hole filled in our life. That proclamation in the power of the Spirit has the ability to cut through arguments, it has the ability to cut through uh, all pretenses that we can put up to say about why God isn't who he is or Jesus isn't who he is. It cuts straight to the very heart. And the people of the time are cut to the heart as people explains. Peter explains and he says, this is who God is. This is who his son is. This is who is your Lord and Saviour is. And the people suddenly realise that this is what's happening. And proclamation in the power of the Spirit has the ability to, to hit us right here. And to reveal our need and our reveal and our need for God and Jesus in our life. But ultimately... It reveals Jesus. Proclamation in the power of the Spirit must always reveal Jesus, must always take us to Jesus Christ. That must always be uh, where that proclamation leads to. That in all of these things, when we share God's word, uh, when we reveal need, we are pointing people to Jesus. We're revealing Jesus Christ to say he is the one that you need. Verse 36 Peter says, therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. We're revealing Jesus Christ. That the spirit, the spirit being available to young and old, slave and free, men and women, helps us to to mine scripture, to understand scripture, to understand God's very word. It helps us to uh, speak into people's need. And the God-shaped heart. And it allows us to reveal our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. But there is no other name under which you can be saved. Verse 38. Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It reveals our need and a desire that we will be filled with the very presence of God himself through his Holy Spirit if we then give our lives to Christ. So it reveals God's word, it reveals our need, and it reveals Jesus and our need for him. But of course, when Peter does it and the disciples do it, uh, in Acts at the time of Pentecost, it's like, I don't know when you were a kid and uh, your parents gave you a glass of leucoside, didn't they, to try and perk you up, pick you up. I guess if you've got diabetes and you eat a Mars bar or whatever it might be, or today if you you, you drink a can of Red Bull, that there's something about the Holy Spirit energises us, um, enhances our ability to share the good news of the gospel with others. And that, Lord, is what we pray for, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that we may be enhanced in our desire and ability to share the good news of others.
I don't know about you, but that's what I want in my life. So come, Lord Jesus, fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may be enhanced to proclaim in the power of the Spirit, through your Spirit, in your Spirit, that we may reveal you to all. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today. Good morning. My name is Pamela. We're going to have a time of interactive prayer and the words will be on the screen. Please do join. Loving God, we thank you for the world you have given us and all within it that speaks of you. You have blessed us in so much and we are glad. We thank you for all that is beautiful, all that causes us to catch our breath in wonder and points to your hand in creation. You have blessed us in so much and we are glad. We thank you for the gift of love given and received, speaking to us of your own great love for us. You have blessed us in so much and we are glad. We thank you for family life, reminding us of the great family of your people in which we belong. You have blessed us in so much and we are glad. We thank you for your food, for our food, our clothes, our, our homes, all the comforts we enjoy and the innumerable ways you provide us, you have blessed us so much, and we are glad. We thank you for this new morning, for the warmth of the sun and the richness of life, giving a foretaste of your gift of eternal life. You have blessed us in so much, and we are glad. Loving God, open our eyes to your presence around us, to your love that surrounds us each day, and to your hand that is always at work. You have blessed us in so much, and we are glad. Speak to us through both the ordinary and the special things of life, that through them we may know you more fully and serve you more truly. You have blessed us in so much, and we are glad. Receive then our praise and thanksgiving, for we offer them to you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join us every Wednesday morning for our online coffee and prayer time. For more information, please contact Hannah at the church office. If you have previously supported MLBC by giving on a Sunday, and would like to still give, here are two alternative ways to do so. Friends, we so thank you so much for watching this morning and we hope that you are richly blessed and have a very good week thinking of your save, our Savior as always. And join us again next Sunday for our Missionary Sunday, which will be so exciting and to hear all the wonderful work that our missionaries are doing and other missionaries do. God bless you. Have a brilliant and blessed week. Amen and amen. Lord, we thank you for today and your goodness to us as a church and fellowship. And may this be a blessing to all of us. In your name, amen and amen.